If you guys are looking for a gaming PC that not only looks great, but performs great in the latest titles, as well as being able to stream, edit, and create content, then this one, well, this may just be for you. Let's do this. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to buy a bloody mouse. If only there was a Champion Series gaming mouse that I could pair with my brand new Corsair K70 RGB TKL keyboard. <clears throat> Excuse me, there is the new Corsair Saber RGB Pro Champion Series gaming mouse, built for and tested by top esports professionals. Where's that voice coming from? With an 18,000 DPI optical sensor, capable of up to 8,000 hertz hyperpoling and ultra responsive quick strike buttons. Pair it with that keyboard of yours and you too can hang out with the pros. Really? Well, not you, Andy. Oh. But everyone else can. Click the link in the description to find out more. So starting with the motherboard, we've gone with the MSI B550 Tomahawk. And you'll probably notice a bit of a theme as we go through the build with particularly the brands that we've chosen. The board is a full-size ATX form factor, so it will fill up our case nicely. And for the money, there really isn't a better value board out there. Yes, you could pay extra and get more, but for the average gamer, you'll find the B550 Tomahawk has pretty much everything you need without breaking the bank. If buying now, you should find that it supports the latest AMD Zen 3 processors straight out of the box, though it may need a BIOS update before you actually get going, which can easily be done due to the board supporting BIOS flashback without a CPU. It also has a 10 plus 2 plus 1 power phase design, meaning you should have, I guess, more than enough juice to deliver a nice overclock if you want to go down that route and get a little bit more out of your CPU. And more than enough cooling to keep your components under control. Being B550 means that while we do have two M.2 slots, one of them can also be run with the latest, blistering fast Gen 4 NVMe drives. It also has a ton of connectivity, including dual Ethernet, one being 2.5G, lightning fast USB type A and type C ports, and overall, the board looks pretty damn nice too. What's not to love? CPU wise, we're featuring the latest AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. It's a six core 12 thread monster, and it's a pivotal skew that brings the fight to Intel where it matters most, gaming. And that's what our system is all about today. It's also pretty much the best value CPU in its segment at the moment, and the mixture of a high thread count and fast boost speed makes it perfect not only for gaming, but streaming as well. With the ability to game and stream at the same time with ease, this is going to be able to handle it no problem at all. It's also great for a multitude of other tasks, whether that be video editing, creative work, or simply opening up a ton of Chrome tabs. We all know the pain, right? Now, another thing that those Chrome tabs are going to need is memory. And we went as fast as we can get without kind of spending too much. Now, the price difference between 3200 megahertz and 3600 megahertz, well, it really isn't much. So it makes sense to go with that. That's why we went with 32 gig of Patriot Viper Gaming Viper Steel RGB. The kit comes as two 16 gig sticks with timings of 19, 19, 19, 43. It also has RGB, and as we know, RGB makes everything better. And with the ability to synchronize everything via MSI's motherboard software, things should start looking pretty sweet. Also, being a two-dim kit means we have room for upgrading at a later date, if you were finding that you maybe wanted a little more. Though for most people, 32 gigs should be more than enough, even for the most demanding content creation tasks. So what about all those lovely games that you want to run? Well, that's where the Seagate Firecuda 510 1TB NVMe drive comes into play. With more than enough space for all the latest games, including Call of Duty, it also has blistering fast speeds, making it perfect for those budding content creators. Also, being M.2, we don't have to worry about any cables, making the build look a lot cleaner than a conventional SATA-based drive. I mean, you could always add a secondary SSD or a hard drive at a later date too, as the board actually has a total of six SATA ports for those who need it. If you wanted a little bit more speed, and thanks to the combination of the B550 board and the 5600X CPU, you could always plump for the Firecuda 520, which will give us even faster speeds, further reducing any bottleneck from the system, especially when you're editing 4K footage, for instance. Also, couple all of that with a five-year warranty and three-year rescue data recovery, well, you're not gonna have to worry about losing any of your data. Now with the CPU, while you could use the included Wraith Stealth CPU cooler, you might want to go for something a bit beefier. And that is where the MSI MPG Core Liquid K360 comes in. It's MSI's kind of first attempt at an AIO as they, I guess, try to fulfill that ecosystem when it comes to a complete build. 
Featuring three 120mm RGB fans and a 2.4 inch LCD screen on the CPU block, it can all be synced again with the rest of your system for the very best looks and styling. Now with the ability of monitoring your system or simply adding a photo of your choice, you can really get your system looking quite unique. Also with a 60mm Torx fan within the block itself, MSI claim superior cooling for your surrounding components like your VRMs and M.2 SSD, something that could come in quite handy, again, especially if you're looking to overclock. Moving on to the graphics card, and I know this is a little bit of a sore subject, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and stock is funneling through to retailers, albeit in dribs and drabs. What we've gone for today to stick with the MSI theme is the RTX 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio. It's more expensive than most models out there, but for a very, very good reason. In our own tests, it outperformed the competition when it came to temperatures and acoustics, and with all the added RGB, it looks pretty damn special too. Now for gaming, we'll take a look at the performance later on, but featuring the latest Ampere architecture means we have second generation RT cores for the very best visuals like ray tracing, third generation Tensor cores for DLSS, and a whole host of goodies, including the latest NVENC encoder for streaming and capturing video. And well, you're onto a winner in my books. To power our system, we went with the Corsair RM650 Watt PSU. 650 watts is more than enough for this system, and even if you are looking at pushing some more power out of your CPU, what we have here is gonna be perfect for it. Now, while you could go for a bronze rated PSU and save a little bit of money like the CX650 or similar, for the extra $10 or so, you're getting a gold rated, fully modular unit, and with double the warranty, a whopping 10 years. I mean, you, I, you know that you have peace of mind then too. What I'm trying to say is that for the money, you're getting a lot of product and from a brand that you know you can trust. Lastly, we need something to put all this lovely hardware into. And that is where the MSI Gunya, worst name ever, 110R steps up to the mark. With a unique split front design that gives you a glimpse of the three 120mm RGB fans on one side, while the other half has a sleek panel to give a kind of unique contrasting look and with a further 120mm RGB fan in the rear and tempered glass side panel to really show off your system in all its glory, well, it should make the rest of our system look absolutely amazing. It also has a ton of support for various cooling solutions, larger GPUs, has a built-in RGB hub, and comes with a USB Type-C front panel port. Overall, it's a pretty damn affordable case, and you really are getting a lot of case for not very much money. Now, another key vital thing that you're gonna need is this little beauty right here. This is a screwdriver. And yes, we have our own, the eTechnics branded toolkit, which is available on store.etechnics.com and has everything you need to build, maintain, and repair a PC, including everything for water cooling as well. So pricing up this whole system was always gonna be a tricky one with the way that things are in the market right now. But if you're able to get them for, let's say close to retail costs, you're gonna be looking at around $1,800 in the US and around 1,700 pounds in the UK. If you wanted to, you could go for a cheaper CPU cooler, maybe less RAM and a normal 3060 to bring that cost down, but you're gonna lose out on some really cool looking aesthetics and the all important performance. So with all the parts here, it's time to do the all important thing and put them all together and see exactly how it performs in some of the latest titles out there. Roll the montage.
well would you look at this beauty. Come on guys, you have to admit, this is looking pretty damn amazing. Obviously, with the inclusion of the K360, which does come with its own fans, we were able to move the front fans into the top to give us even more airflow, which should all add to keeping the system nice and cool, so that both our CPU and our GPU can boost for even longer. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at exactly how this beast of a system does in games. Let's do this. So there we have it, this system chewed up and spat out pretty much every game we threw at it, from your typical battle royale multiplayer games to the hardcore single player games that give us amazing visuals like Cyberpunk. It goes to show that the whole system is perfect for balls to the wall 1080p gaming on max settings and even gives us a little bit of scope if you wanted to kind of up that for some pretty maxed out 1440p gaming in certain titles. Now if you did want to go for something I guess more fast paced and I guess at a higher resolution, I'd maybe look at going up to maybe an RTX 3070 or equivalent from AMD, like the 6800 or even the 6800 XT. But in the current climate, we really can't afford to be picky. And right now I'd say, I guess simply go for the card that you can afford and the card that you can actually buy. That's the key important thing. So I did mention keeping everything cool and quiet and this system did exactly that. The CPU didn't go above 57 degrees, while the GPU kept itself cool and quiet by not even going over 67 degrees. This was all measured during our benchmarking session where we ran all of these titles back to back with no chance of giving the system any breathing space whatsoever. The side panel was on as well. It just goes to show that the more expensive Gaming X Trio GPU really is up to the task. And that mammoth K360 CPU cooler really did help tame the 5600X under load. And well, look at it. It looks pretty cool as well. Now, if you did want to get more cooling performance, the only thing I'd really recommend would be maybe go for a case that has a mesh front to just give you that little more airflow to the mass amount of fans that we've actually got going on in the system right here. 
Now, in terms of the build, everything went well without a hitch. The case had plenty of space for cable management and the included RGB hub was a nice touch as well. We went with, I guess, all MSI to really fulfill that ecosystem. And I think in terms of aesthetics, it paid off. Yes, you're gonna kind of pay a little bit of a premium for the cooler and the GPU, but a lot of that all comes down to personal preference. If you wanna save yourself a bit of money, you could go for slightly different components, but you may find that they don't perform as well when it comes to cooling and acoustics, and then consequently boost speeds. But again, it all really comes down to you, your budget, and exactly what you're trying to achieve. Now, I did mention that gaming is only one side of it, and the other would be content creation. Now, the 5600X, 32 gig of RAM, lightning fast SSD, and 3060 Ti would see no issue with streaming, creating content, and even editing. MSI, again, have a range of products aimed specifically at content creators, like the Prestige PS431 WU monitor that I use day to day, which features a 5K 2K resolution, accurate colors for photo and video work, and a 21 to nine aspect ratio. Also, another thing to mention is that if you are in the process of researching into building your own system, head on over to our Discord. The link is in the description below where we have a great community of people who will happily help you with advice and just generally going over what you're thinking about building. Also, if you love what I do here, consider supporting me and the team through Patreon, where you get access to behind the scenes content, exclusive giveaways, and much, much more. Again, the link is in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe next time we'll cover Asus or Gigabyte. Obviously this time it was all about MSI. As I guess the whole reasoning behind it is there are more companies coming out with new product ranges like CPU coolers, for instance. If you did enjoy this video, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.